Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church's service for January 23rd, 2022. Since it is unsafe to gather in person today due to inclement weather, we are providing you a special abbreviated church service. Even though there won't be a bulletin for this service, you can still follow along with the message as well as by seeing the words on the screen. If you would like, please consider donating to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. The offertory box will be in its normal location at the church. Now, without further ado, welcome to worship and enjoy the service. Good morning and welcome to worship on our YouTube channel this morning. The worship order will be a little different than our regular worship service since we're not able to gather in person this morning. But I'm thankful for a few of us who were able to gather and were able to bring you this meditation. This morning we will be studying 1 Kings chapter 18 and I have entitled my message showers of blessing if you encounter a season of drought in your life you will most likely end up dissatisfied and unfulfilled but there is a solution put god at the center of your life and give him top priority in your thoughts deeds and time then don't be surprised if the rain begins to fall and you receive a refreshing shower of God's blessing and grace. Do we have any other announcements this morning? Hearing none, I just want to um, remind you to be safe and careful if you're outside or if you're traveling. Remember always to carry rope with you, rope with you. You can use it to throw around a tree or a limb of a tree if you, um, uh, find yourself uh, fallen on the ground, you can uh, attach that to a tree and it'll help pull yourself up with it. And if you're driving your car, carry a rope with you, you get stuck uh, or you experience some slippery roads, you can stop your car and you can weave that rope through the wheels, uh, through the tires of your uh, car and it will really act like chains and you can travel almost anywhere through um, snow and sleet and even ice, it works very well with that. So the rope will give you traction. It'll give you the traction that you need. If there's no other announcements this morning, Dr. Rob will play for his prelude, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Again, we welcome you to our YouTube worship service at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. <laughs>
Our call to worship this morning is based on Psalm 100. It is a responsive psalm. So we ask that you uh, repeat where it says all. Shout for joy to the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. The Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Shout for joy to the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Shout for joy to the Lord. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, worship the Lord with gladness. confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty God, we do not always walk in the light of your word. We turn away from your word and will and follow our own sinful desires and temptations of the world. We try to excuse ourselves and hide from you in the darkness of our sin. Have mercy on us and forgive us. God has, led, has had mercy on us. He sent his son to be light and our savior. By his death and resurrection, Jesus has won forgiveness and eternal life for us. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Walk in the light of the Lord 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, on this day, you revealed your son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our life and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning with verses 18 through 21. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have, and your father's house, because you have forsaken my commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. Now therefore send and gather all Israel to me at Mount Carmel and the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent to all the people of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is good, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. And from verses 41 through 46. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of the rushing of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he bowed himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And at the seventh time he said, Behold, a little cloud like a man's hand is rising out of the sea. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down lest the rain stop you. And in a little while the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Here ends the reading of our Old Testament lessons. Shout. 
century BC there's a man named Elijah who lived 800 900 years before Christ on the throne of Israel was a pagan king named Ahab and everybody knows his wife's name she was Jezebel but with the rule of Ahab and Jezebel we have something that had never taken place in Israel before now paganism was institutionalized in the government and they brought into the palace 850 prophets pagan prophets 400 prophets of baal and 450 prophets of astaroth and now suddenly the worship of the real god jehovah god was out of place unacceptable and Ahab led to the killing of those who followed the real God. And we know that there were probably 6,000 or 7,000 of those who believed in him. And they were hiding in caves in fear of their life. Now that's the situation we have there in 1 Kings chapter 18. And by the way, it's not much different than we experience today in the 21st century. You can talk about any religion, faith, cult, uh, name, or God. Uh, you, you can deal with anything in the world in public life. But if you get on television or on the radio, one word is absolutely prohibited, and that's the word Jesus. That's the way it was in the 8th century also. In this situation, we have Elijah, an unlikely prophet, uh, in fact, the last man standing, so to speak. He came from nowhere, he was a nobody, and God said to Elijah, go show yourself to Ahab and pronounce judgment on him and say, it will not rain until I give my word Elijah pronounced judgment he went in hiding for three years and then God said to him Elijah show yourself go back to Ahab let me encourage you to read the complete 18th chapter of 1 Kings it's, it's just a powerful uh, dramatic story Listen to chapter 18, verse 1. Now it happened after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the face of the earth. Now that's something, isn't it? After three years, rain. After three and a half years, now rain. Verse 17 says, when Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, is this you, you troubler of Israel? Now the word troubler there means snake. He was really saying, you snake in the grass. You're the one who brought this drought upon Israel. And now you come and you come to me and you face me again, three and a half years, and it hasn't rained you snake you snake in the grass now that's how the king addressed elijah 
But listen to how Elijah responds. He said, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the Baals. We know that all the pagan uh, gods, all the pagan prophets had gathered there at Mount Carmel. The king did this because the land was in desperate need of rain. The whole issue was rain. Thousands of people came and they gathered all around the base of the mountain there. And this guy, Elijah, had stopped the rain and closed, literally closed the windows of heaven. And now he's back. And whatever happens on on Mount Carmel, uh, maybe he will open again the windows of heaven and we can have this refreshing rain and it will come and replenish our land. There were many groups gathered around that mount, but I want to tell you about two. Two of the, I guess, most important groups that were there. First of all, there were the prophets of Baal. There were about 850 of them, if you count the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Ashtaroth. Um, They were uh, magnificently dressed, by the way, these prophets were. And around their neck hung a piece of steel. And you see, this was a fire god. And you can imagine 850 appearing on the mountain along with Ahab and all of his splendor of robes and, and uh, that all of his servants had brought. And they've got these pieces of steel that are hanging around their neck. And early in the morning, the sun would catch those pieces of steel. 850 pieces of steel. And that reflection was just magnificent. It was a light show that you've probably never seen before. But you could see it. You could see it now, a light show, 850 men here and all their servants with pieces of metal around their necks. So those were the prophets of Baal. They were gathered around the mountain. And then Elijah was there. I imagine the people sort of felt sorry for the prophet Elijah. They probably looked at him and said, look at that guy. Look at that guy. He's representing the old-fashioned God, Jehovah, Yahweh. You know, just look at him. They felt sorry for him. They didn't need to feel sorry for Elijah. Let me tell you something. Shekinah was in his life, and the angels were ministering to him with every spoken word of truth. He was outnumbered, absolutely. It was Elijah versus over 850 prophets of Baal. He was outnumbered, but let me tell you something. God plus one in any situation is always a majority. Always a majority. So we have a battle. It's a showdown. We might call it the Super Bowl. A battle of the gods. But you know what? The people didn't care. They didn't care. It says in Scripture, they didn't say a word. <laughs> Sounds like the people, doesn't it? They didn't say a word. They just wanted it to rain. It hadn't rained in three and a half years. It was a clear choice. God or Baal, Baal or God, that was a choice. And you know what the battle is over? The battle is over worship. It really is. We have the worship of Baal. We have the worship of the real God. The battle is always over worship. Show me your altar. Show me that which your life, what controls your life. Show me what controls your life. Show me the bales in your life. And anything that I put in the central part of my life where God only belongs, that becomes a bale. We see in Scripture they began to worship Baal, the fire god. 
But Baal didn't answer them. The people gathered around and they saw that Baal was not God. He was not the real God. Now in the beginning, Elijah said, choose God or are you going to choose Baal? And the people didn't answer a word. But now when the fire came down and it consumed the stones, it consumed the sacrifice and all the water that that was there around the altar that was built, everything in that area was being consumed by fire. Lightning even came down. And now they said they were lying flat on their faces. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God, they said. And you know what happened? Elijah brought all these false prophets down from the mountain and he took a sword and he did what? He killed every one of them. Killed every one of them. By the way, you can go to the top of Mount Carmel today and you will find a statue of Elijah standing there to this day and in his hand is a sword. There's a sword there. It was a strange thing. But what I want you to really see, you know that story, but I want you to see the ending of that story. It's a scene that's even stranger than what we've already looked at. If we look at 1 Kings, verse 41, now Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the roar of a heavy shower. Elijah says there's a sound of a roar of a heavy shower. Nobody heard it but Elijah. The king didn't hear it. The people didn't hear it. He's the only one that heard that roar. Let me tell you, the closer you get to God, the more you'll hear God's just slightest whisper. The closer you get to God. This was Elijah's faith. What does Hebrew chapter 1 tell us? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. He heard raindrops. Nobody nobody else heard them. And then look what happened at the latter part of verse 42. And he crouched down on the earth and put his face between his knees. (laughs) Can we imagine that? He... Here here we see Elijah now in a fetal position. He's not on top of the mountain, Mount Carmel, celebrating. You'd think he'd have been celebrating because now the people were declaring that his God, Yahweh, was the real God. You'd think he'd have been celebrating. You'd think he'd have been coming down from the mountain and giving high fives to all of those people that were coming down. And, And you might think he would say, well, we showed them, we showed them who the real God was and the victory is ours three cheers for us no Elijah's on top of the mountain and his head is down his head is in his knees his head is in his hands and he's praying now what's going on here We have to ask ourselves, he's praying on top of Mount Carmel. He's in a fetal position and he looks up a little bit. He tells his servant, he says, go out to the Mediterranean and see if you see any sign of rain. And so the man goes out and comes back and says, Elijah, not a a sign of rain. Elijah still head is buried between his knees and his hands and he he looks up again and tells the servant he says go look again nothing go look again and there's 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 still nothing the seventh time he tells him to go look over the Mediterranean And there's not a cloud in the sky. But Elijah's praying. 
And the servant looks out into the sky again and Elijah says, go and look one last time, go and look. And the man said, way in the distance of the Mediterranean, I see a cloud like a little hand, like a little hand. Elijah said, you'd better get off this mountain. There's gonna be showers and showers and showers of blessing that's gonna come down over this land. Can you imagine the people uh, walking and running down that mountain. He, here they are, they're running down the mountain, walking down the mountain. They've just seen fire from heaven. They've seen lightning come from heaven and it consumed all of that stuff that was there. And now all of a sudden they think, well, where's the rain? And then it begins to sprinkle. Begins to sprinkle, begins to rain. And they know now they're worshiping the real God. They're back in relationship with him. Uh, the covenant has now been reestablished and it's raining. The windows of heaven are open and it rains. Can't you imagine the excitement of the people as they came down the mountain they hadn't seen rain in three and a half years? Does anybody here this morning need some showers of blessing on your life? Anybody here need a shower of blessing? Sure we do. Sure we do. How does it come? Exactly the way it happened at Mount Carmel. Exactly the way. There's repentance and then there's confession and we begin a life of obedience. We begin living one day at a time, totally dependent upon God and we confess our sin and we turn from our sin. And then we get back in a covenant relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You have to look out though. There's gonna be showers of blessing that's gonna come on your life. Not before, but after. So the choice is clear today for us as it was clear to the people at that day in the eighth century. And it's this, it's a cold, clear choice. Choose Christ and go to heaven beginning right now or choose Baal and go to hell beginning right now. That's always the choice. It's your choice. Amen. Discouraged thinking all is lost 
prepare to receive the benediction go now and wait and work for the coming of the day of God in the wild places prepare a straight path for the Lord lead lives of holiness and godliness strive to be found at peace and speak freely of the Lord's comfort and promise and may God our shepherd gather you in loving arms make Jesus Christ reconcile justice and peace within you and may the Holy Spirit baptize you into the life of God. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>